Hi, I'm Sarah Jackson. This is my social media and ABA therapy screencast for my TEL 313 course, Technology and Education, at Arizona State University. So how technology can support social media and ABA therapy? These are, here are some of the devices that our learners would use. Um, and one important aspect I do need to highlight is that ABA therapy is considered healthcare, meaning that we abide by HIPAA laws and confidentiality regulations. How that affects social media usage for our learners is that in our centers, they cannot use our devices to access social media because social media websites are not confident, confidential or HIPAA compliant. The only way they can access social media in our centers using our devices is if they are doing using YouTube and it's through our account. Um, however, if they are if they are receiving services for ABA therapy in home and they're using their own device. And our BCBAs, their parents and caregivers have all established that navigating social media is an impactful learning opportunity for them. Then we can support some of our teenage learners in navigating social media. So that's who I'll be talking about for the majority of the screencast. So best practices. As soon as our learners are, are really motivated to navigate the internet and social media, it's kind of a good time to get involved. Um, and once social media has been established as an impactful part of their learning process by their parents and caregivers and our BCBAs, um, we can start with something simple like creating an account, um, adding friends, uh, checking your newsfeed, liking photos, making your own posts, and then we can kind of graduate to the social and communication aspects of social media. We also have to teach them what not to do. So although um, that will totally be individualized to the learner, it is important that they learn what's not safe on the internet and on social media. Um, and then depending on the learner, the amount of support and supervision may vary, but the goal eventually will be for the learner to be able to be on social media completely independently without us. So how does it support the process for learning? Social media allows naturalistic learning opportunities for daily living skills acquisitions, such as independent pastime. So our learners have been surrounded by adults. They're entire lives. And so a lot of our learners, by the time they get to their teenage years, it can be difficult to navigate time alone. And for example, um, their parents cooking dinner in the next room while they're sitting on their computer scrolling through social media would be a very age appropriate and functional way for them to not only be socializing, but independently and as a pastime that they would hopefully enjoy. Um, so literacy communication, so typing, reading, forming sentences, uh, expressing their ideas, seeing communication being modeled and communicating themselves uh, are all things that we do in ABA therapy already. Um, socializing with their peers. What do, what do their peers want to share? What do they want to talk about? How can they engage with that? Again, these are all things that we're doing in ABA already, except we have to contrive these opportunities for learning. Um, whereas in social media, they're already naturally happening. So it would be way more impactful learning opportunity if they were engaging with the, these situations, but they were totally natural and with their peers. According to Holland from our course readings, social media supports young people to develop their voice. This is really important for our learners and for their peers. Um, it can help them develop confidence along with preparing them what, for what the diverse world looks like around them. Uh, according to Spiegelman and Gill, social network sites have the potential to empower persons with disabilities. So what are the short-term and long-term effects? Um, what are the final products of learning? So short-term, engage in age-appropriate and social interactions as they get older, according to Caton and Chapman in 2016. Gain communication, typing and literacy skills through reading, responding, and creating their own posts. Introduce to diverse cultures and perspectives, according to Fulgur and all in 2013. Become more confident and empowered when using technology and communicating with others. Some of our long-term effects, build relationships and maintain friendships with their peers. Um, technological independence, it will empower the learners to become more an active part of their community and with other people in their lives. Can support their ability to work and receive an education, according to Daimian Dao and all 2018. So further, Daimian Dao and all 
um, discuss technology competency and how it supports individuals with disabilities uh, to continue their education and or maintain a job in the future. So technology is many individuals' ticket to independence, and social media is a great way for them to become independent technologically and socially. So overall, if we taught our learners to the functional uses for social media, we could make a lasting impact on their ability to have a fulfilling and independent life. Here are my references. And thank you so much for listening.